Hello, my name is Jimmy Colville, and I'm here with Will Hayes, and he was a witness to the tsunami and earthquake that was in Japan that just recently happened. And I'm going to ask him a series of questions, and the first question that I have for Will is, why did you end up going to Japan? I know it was for a church thing, and through your church, and... Yeah, well, actually, it was. Uh, I ended up doing an internship for Hope International Fellowship, mm -hmm. which is a sister church to uh, the church I go to, which is New Day Community Church on Nichols Road. So um, I've been there a few times on different mission trips, and then I was given the opportunity to do an internship this last summer. So I went for three months from January 1st to uh, March 23rd when I got back. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So when your church sends people out, how many people do they usually send there? Because I've met some of the people that go to your church and yeah. some of the people that have been there. And Well, usually they like to keep it around uh, 10 to 15 people. Mm. But the last year they sent a team. There was about 25 people that went. Oh, that's, so, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was about 20 or 10% of our church actually went which is a pretty big amount or percentage for a church going on a mission trip. Mm -hmm. So so when you first saw that this earthquake happened, did you have the peace of God on you, even though it was, uh, it was pro I imagine it was pretty shocking to see, to see that, to actually be there? Yeah, it was very interesting because... Um, I've never experienced an earthquake before, so this is the first one that I've ever felt, and it's a very interesting feeling, because just all of a sudden you just start shaking, and I didn't know what it was or what to do, and then I just hear Pastor Dennis say, I think this is an earthquake upstairs, and it's like, you better get in a doorway. So like at first, my initial reaction was that I wasn't really too sure about what was going on or like how to handle it, but you know, I just know that God was there with me the whole time that I've been there. I didn't have any fears about it at all. It was about, because um, we experienced the big earthquake, which was where I was, was about a four point in, from the nine point that happened. And then about a week later, we had one hit our area, which was a six point. And uh, that one was a little bit more shocking. It was really a little more strong and it hit us pretty fast. That one, like, you could definitely feel like just fear over people and you just walk outside and you just felt the spirit of fear so but I just started praying and I know that God was with me the whole time and just broke off that spirit of fear that's good to know and was it difficult being there and there's like a language barrier I know that from some of the footage I saw there were people with masks on and the nuclear reactors, they're having problems with that, and yeah. of course the tidal waves coming in, was that being in another country where you can't really communicate with everybody clearly, was that a difficulty at all, even though you had the church people there with you? Yeah, it was definitely a difficulty, but not being able to communicate with people, because I'm a very like personal uh, type of person, I love to talk, and I love to talk with other people. And being in a place where you can't mm. understand what people are asking you and you only know a little bit of the language and how to say it, like, I don't know Japanese, it was definitely difficult and uh, it was very interesting. And people, when people are wearing the mask, that's usually like to help them prevent getting sick or if they are sick, then they'll wear it and uh, they'll go to work with it on so they don't get other people sick. But um, yeah, it was definitely a difficulty trying to go for three months on a daily basis of not being able to talk to a lot of people. Mm. Were there many American people that were trying to get a hold of you through like Facebook and Twitter, and could you contact them during that time? Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely did a, a lot of Skyping, which is really helpful. That was really great because I was able to call my mom be like, and tell her mm. that I was okay. And I was able to call uh, my boss and tell him that I would end up being another week late. 
coming back to work. So uh, it was definitely helpful. I was able to keep in contact with people and let them know I was okay. Mm. Yeah. So did your church, did they help out at all when, like at the aftermath of it at all? Yeah, it was, it was really great because um, Hope International Fellowship is actually part of a church, a bigger church organization over there called uh, Every Nation Churches. And uh, they, uh, one of their sister churches about three hours away started collecting donations to bring into the hit area, to bring into Sendai. And uh, so our church decided to send out flyers around the neighborhood and start asking people if they want to donate anything to bring it by the house. And within the first afternoon of handing out flyers, their front area of the house was just full of supplies. And it was really amazing being able to see, like, you know, God already working in people's lives in just a short amount of time. So it was really great. So we started collecting items and bringing them to the other church, and they brought them into Sendai, the hit area. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And also, like, do you remember, like, exactly, like, what was, like, your first reaction? Like, could you maybe try to re-describe that when you, mm-hmm. when you first saw what happened on the TV and you realized where you were at? And... Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting because right away I thought of 9-11, like, oh. watching the footage of that over and over again. Because what they did in Japan, they it was basically news for five days straight after the earthquake happened and the tsunami mm-hmm. came in. So you're just watching all these videos that people took of uh, the water just coming in and washing out all the cars and buildings. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it was a little uh, terrifying, I guess, in a sense, mm-hmm. because, like, you just feel that, that you know hopelessness a little bit in Mm -hmm. people's hearts and it like what I was telling people just kind of combined Y2K with 9-11 and that's kind of what it was like but you know amplify it by four at least Mm -hmm. to actually get a good feeling of what it was like yeah it's a different experience I'd imagine being there a different atmosphere and that sort of thing yeah and also, I was wondering, as I've, I've heard on the news, like, they said that uh, Japan's infrastructure is, like, equipped to handle an earthquake more than, like, other nations like Haiti or, you know what I mean? And how long do you think it'd take the people to recover? Do you think it'll take them years to recover? Or do you think it might not be very long before they go back to normal life? I'm sure that it, there's some trauma in people's mm-hmm. life still. Yeah, it'll it'll definitely take years because they had everything planned out. We we got really quick information about the earthquake and then the tsunami. We knew about it and when it was going to hit. It's just, it it was a really short amount of time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, they they built up their... uh, the walls to help fight off tsunamis, tsunamis and stuff like that, but it just went right over them Mm -hmm. so you can definitely tell like it's gonna take a while for them to kind of rebuild that infrastructure back up all right and you also said that the guy that uh helped with the nuclear reactors was a christian yeah so what what do you know about him um i don't know a lot about him i just know that the prime minister appointed one of his cabinet members Mm. to be in charge of uh finding out a way to fix the nuclear uh, meltdown. So um, somehow we just started hearing through the grapevine that the group that was able to figure out how to cool the uh, part, the the, um, pillars down, how to cool the uh, rods that were in the nuclear Mm. plants down, they hooked up electricity to it and it was able to start taking off some of that extra uh, energy that was being produced and we just found out that it was a Christian group that was doing it and it was oh, really right. amazing because one of the mm-hmm. members of the church there she was praying 
after like the earthquake happened, the tsunami hit, she was praying that somehow a Christian would be involved in helping fix mm -hmm. the nuclear meltdown. And then mm -hmm. we found that out, and it was just a, a God answering a prayer. That's great. Yeah. And I notice whenever there is a world ca catastrophe, there's always Christians from the United States that are willing to help. And, and I really believe that that makes America look good to the rest of the world. And it makes people that are genuine, real Christians look good to the rest of the world as well. And also, I saw on TV that some of the food rations, did that affect you at all? The, like, did you have plenty of food to eat during this crisis period? We definitely saw a lot of empty shells. Mm. Like, a lot of the water was gone, the cup noodles, bread. Mm. A lot of it was just empty shelves. Even flashlights and batteries were being taken, like, people were just buying them out. Um, <clears throat> and also the rice. Rice was another big thing that they were just starting mm. to run out of. Mainly because uh, people were buying them to send to the hit area. So, and uh, for blackouts, because they, had to, they started scheduling blackouts after the nuclear meltdown to just help save on energy. So there were scheduled blackouts while we were there. And um, people were just stocking up on supplies to have during the blackout. So mm -hmm. there's definitely a lot of empty shelves of certain things. Mm. So how did you adapt to that? You're in a country where you're used to eating more of an American style food and already you're de eating a different cuisine. And, and then, then after that, a lot of the food's gone. You know, how did, how did you adapt to it and get used to it? Um, it, it wasn't bad actually. I think like the, the first part of going there, it took about three weeks to actually get used to the food because it was a lot more fresh and it was mm. a lot, a little bit more nutritious and it was really good. Um, but after like a lot of the thing, like a lot of the shelves were becoming empty. Like I think the one thing we had to really worry about was bread and rice. But one of the members of the church, he actually has his own rice field. So uh, the Pastor Pastor Dennis and his family, they usually buy rice through him, mm. so we were okay with that. So, yeah. so would you say overall the people, what's their attitude right now about the situation? Do they feel it's gotten better, or do they feel it's a continual crisis that's in the land there? Um, I feel that it's getting better. Like, mm. you, I could already see it, like, people changing, like, just the spirit changing. One thing that I knew, like, right away to pray for was just pray against fear and pray against hopelessness because mm -hmm. it's a very, like, hopeful country, and they're very respectful to each other. And then after that hit, like, you could just kind of see on people, like, just weighing on their shoulders, just hopelessness. So, like, it, it's... I know it's going to get better, and this is God's time to work in that nation. Mm -hmm. And I know he's just going to, we're going to see some amazing changes there. Oh, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's good that your church is doing a good work there and sending people out there yeah. and that sort of thing. And also I was wondering, when after the earthquake and the crisis hit, did you finish out your internship, or once it hit, did you try to come back home, or did you do the duration of your internship, even though all this was going on? Yeah, um, I actually had to stay longer because uh, we couldn't make it to the airport, so I finished out my internship, and then I had to extend my stay about 10 days because uh, the roads were blocked off and we were experiencing blackouts, so we couldn't drive because the main road was blocked off and then I couldn't take the train because the, we were having power outs. And uh, so I ended up staying for another 10 days and which was amazing was that the second time I switched my ticket, uh, like we were just sure like I have to go that time because I need to get back or else I'd become an illegal alien over there. But um, the day before I was supposed to leave like the main road that was blocked off opened up so I know it was God like saying like you know I need to stay a little bit longer and he has it all planned out and stuff like that so it worked out perfectly 
Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs>